Rusty, thank you. Good morning. Welcome to the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. Everyone, this is exciting times for fans of sports cars in Australia after an amazing Bathurst 12 hour at the start of the year, which you might have seen on the screens of seven. We're launching into a brand new season for the Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia, powered by AWS. And this is some kind of field, hugely competitive and very deep with some new names, some new faces and some new cars as well that we will touch on over the course of two 20-minute uh, qualifying sessions and then two one-hour sprint races over the course of the weekend. And yes, you might be going, hang on a minute, an hour's not a sprint race. Well, in GT terms, it absolutely is. They will be flat out for the entire distance at one of the quickest racetracks, not just in Australia, but in the world. Freshly surfaced as the boys downstairs touched on with uh, a brand new bitumen layer on top of this 4.46 kilometre track. And that is going to produce some kind of uh, lap records we expect this weekend. And it should be some pretty spectacular racing as well. Here it is. It's one of the most iconic racetracks in this part of the world. 12 turns, 4.46 kilometres. And in a GT3 car with all the downforce, the aero and the slick tyres they run, an average lap speed of over 180 kilometres an hour. The big braking zone down into Miller Corner, then Siberia, the southernmost point of the racetrack where the rain and hail come from, past the hay shed at 230 k's an hour. The big break downhill at MG, which is turn 10, and then 11 and 12 in a GT3 car, flat through 12, onto the Wayne Gardner front straight. And then they do it all over again, and in a GT3 car, just over a minute and 26 seconds the anticipated lap times but in practice yesterday they were even quicker than that they were almost two seconds beneath the existing race lap record here at Phillip Island this is going to be a properly fast weekend now you just saw that shot running down through Stoner Corner to the braking zone at turn four very wet offline a little rain shower swept across the circuit just as cars got to the racetrack this morning that is drying. We've just had GT4 qualifying. There is a dry line, but this will be a circuit that gets better and better over the course of these two 20-minute qualifying sessions. Uh, catching his breath from the run up the <laughs> stairs to the best commentary box in Australia is Greg Rust. Rusty, uh, I this wish is I was exciting. <laughs> yeah, I know. It really is, to your point. Um, a little bit of news, too, and you may have covered it off. Apologies while I was running up uh, stairs. He's a Brenton Grove at the wheel of the number four machine here. We want to say a quick g'day to Stephen Grove, who's not been feeling 100%. He's back in the hotel room, I think, with the flu, and we're hoping that he'll be right for tomorrow. Uh, and that's necessitated a few things behind the scenes here, Richard. So, firstly, they've gone to a lot of the other teams, asked could Brenton run as a solo driver today. I think that's been rubber stamped yep. and he'll be okay. There is a few caveats around that in relation to length of pit stop, championship points and so on. But it's a great chance for this Grove team to get some more miles under their belt uh, with that car. Speaking of cool cars, what a mission by this team. The cars arriving, I think, in March in Western Australia. Um, ordinarily, their, their base uh, for Arise Racing, Rich, as you know, is at, uh, at Wanneroo, but they've had to get a special workshop for this to brand spanking new cars. Adam DeBore uh, heavily involved behind the scenes and getting to know what they were like actually in Italy and what to expect from the cars when they race them here. Awesome to have these 296 GT Ferraris as a part of our stellar, stellar field in 2024. Yeah, it's the first time we've seen the latest and greatest Ferrari model on the racetracks of Australia. These cars are incredible as we get our first look at the Racetalk.com drone cam this weekend. Nice shots down at turn four. These cars are stunning. They are as close to a purpose-built race car as you can get in GT3 regulations carbon fibre front and rear clips. They're actually developed by Orica, who build LMP2 cars and prototypes that win at Le Mans. These are a trick race car and Arise Racing, the first team in Australia to get their hands on them. Two brand new cars, powered by a twin turbo three litre V6. So it's a different sounding Ferrari to what we've been used to in the past in Australia, Rusty, but this is a brand that in domestic GT racing has a great history. Going all the way back to Ross Palmer's Ferrari 355. Remember the Pulse Cola car? Wild thing that that was through Marinello Motorsport, who won the Bathurst 12-hour twice and won rounds of Australian GT. 
but we haven't seen a Ferrari in the outright class of this category since 2018, so it's been a long time between drinks. Showing my age, I can uh, remember some great races with Neil Crompton at the wheel of a Ferrari yeah. chasing Jimmy Richards at the mountain and so on when they were a support category to, to supercars in those halcyon days. So great to have um, these cars in this field. And seeing, you talked about the clips before, the, the front and rear which come off as, as one piece and looking at the aero and the way that they can make um, changes, very, very impressive. And, and Adam tells me the learnings early on in these cars, they, they require incredible um, exact detail when they're making some of those changes. So they're talking, um, you know, very, very minute measurements when they make those changes early on, though. How about the time in this qualifying session for Chas Most at a 1 minute 26, 438 from Jackson Evans, who's actually lighting up our timing monitor as we chat away here. So they're both in the 26s. That's pretty impressive at this early stage. That's the Dale ITM Audi coming through shot there um, a moment ago. Teammate behind from Melbourne Performance Centre in the Audi Customer Sport Racing Australia. That's Will Brown in the 87 car that he'll share with Brad Schumacher and goes to a 26-4, pops to the top by 0 0.019 of a second. That is a GT3 qualifying record here already at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. The previous best was Jack LeBrock way back in 2013 in an Erebus Motorsport SLS AMG. Remember the Gullwing car? Oh, awesome. awesome thing that won Bathurst that year as well. That was just after the last resurface of the circuit. So it's been a long time between lap records for GT cars here. So Brown, quickest. moston has gone second for Arise Racing, and then Jackson Evans, his teammate. Oh, the spark has wow. gone off. Wow. Too hot for Brenton Grove into turn one. First time Grove Racing's rocked the Mercedes AMG GT3 product. They've come out of a long history with Porsche into the Mercedes brand. And this is a big, big moment. It was before that, though, the sparks, yes. Rusty, as he was on the bumps on the way down there into turn one. I, I think it was well wide of, of the line or the apex, too, wasn't it? So it was in some trouble. Very high speed corner, that one, the Dewan corner. As we go back to the racetalk.com drone cam, I know a bloke involved in that racetalk.com website. Yeah. We, uh, we might have a different angle for you here. I think our team in the outside broadcast trucks. So look, watch for the sparks here. So that's from the side skirt, left-hand side of the car, so loaded up on the entry. It's 275 k's an hour on approach to turn one in a GT3 car, and all of the downforce and aerodynamic grip that these cars have got loads up that left-hand side of the car as they turn in. So it's still sitting pretty flat there as he comes out of it. I think just a little bit too hot in. I don't think there was a failure or a tyre issue. I, I think that was just too fast into the corner. Big shift for that team too. They've been very yeah. much Porsche aligned in the past few years when it comes to GT racing, both here and abroad for that matter. But now at the wheel of the Mercedes AMG, Ferrari returns to the circuit here. I think that was Garth Walden's machine just coming through there a moment ago too. That car currently in sixth uh, on the order in this qualifying session with a 1 minute 28.87. The time to beat is Will Brown, who at the moment continues to improve. He's gone the fastest that we've seen in the first sector. So Brown with a 1 minute 26.4191. Is he about to perhaps even go quicker than that time? Second sector, he's up as well. So Brown going on with it. I spoke to Will yesterday, uh, sorry, Thursday, there's some media activities going on. So you haven't really raced a mid-engine car before, have you guys? No, nah, not really. It's like, have you, have you learned anything? It's like, nah, it's all good, mate. I'm just going to jump in and go really fast. It's like, good on you, mate. Off you go. Uh, you do still, that way too well. Still spends a lot of time in flying around between his supercars commitments. Here goes Brown at a 25.8. That's nuts. Huge lap time for the Audi. Shaw and Partners and Kelso Electrical. Chaz Mostert will be back out of the lane in car number one. Brendan Lynch has gone to third in the ITM Audi that he's sharing with Tim Miles. It's Team South Island. That is a young bloke from Invercargill alongside a not quite so young bloke from Ashburton, a little bit further north. Jackson Evans fourth, speaking of Kiwis. Alex Peroni's fifth. Valentino Astuti is doing an outstanding right. job. He's just been buffed by Brenton Grove, but he's seventh outright and in a trophy class car. That's the Mike Bailey Aston Martin, the V12 Vantage car. And he's quicker than all of the AM competitors, which is currently topped by Ben Schutz in eighth outright, just in front of Garth Walden. There is the Aston Martin. Cool to see this car. 
and the here noise, it. the V12, <laughs> bring them back. And from, uh, I mean, you mentioned about the surname there before, Rich, it's third generation, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, his yep. grandfather raced. Uh, those of you that followed open wheel racing um, in this country will, will remember Sam racing in Formula Holden and the like. So currently for Valentino at the moment, seventh fastest in this session. So lots of good stories that we've got to share with you in the 2024 edition of the Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia. And the top man is here too, Rich, isn't he? So we've got representation globally from uh, from SRO. Here we'll talk more about that um, as, the, as the coverage continues. So Leach goes third with a 126.27. And it's close. This is a good lap from Alex Peroni. International Aussie spent a long time on the pathway to Formula One in FIA Formula Three. He's linked up with Mark Rosser at Team BRM and goes second, 25-9 in the ACM Finance car. So Mark spent a little bit of time out. Brenton Grove's just gone quickest at a 25-7-8. 19 thousandths of a second quicker than Will Brown. Sparks Huge again. From the Grove AMG. Yeah, that's pretty limited ride height-wise, isn't it, on the run down into Turn 1. Great lap, Brenton Grove. Cam? Yeah, I thought I'd jump down with the Arise, Arise Racing GT team. Chas Mostert's back out on track again after a slight tweak. Liam Talbot, great to be back with you, mate. That Ferrari looks magnificent. Yeah, it's an absolute dream to drive. I can't wait. Let me let me add it. <laughs> so qualifying here at Phillip Island, always a challenging uh, situation. But in these changeable, cool conditions, slightly damp, uh, Chas reporting anything back at the moment? No, nah, I mean, just going out doing laps. Um... Obviously, the track's been resurfaced, so there's super high grip. Like, it's just mind-altering, like, how fast you can go through these corners now. And, um, yeah, just build, 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 and see what we've got. Last question for you. We saw on the time sheets yesterday that uh, it's a bit of a Ferrari v uh, Mercedes battle. Are you seeing any other cars that might be in contention outside of those two marks? Yeah, it's hard to know with the BOP. We think it's an Audi track. Uh, Mercedes might be struggling. We think we're probably uh, handicapped with our BOP, but let's see. No one knows. Good luck, Liam. Thank you. Nice to have Cam Vanderdunga with us for the coverage. You will also hear from Matt Nolte as the day continues. And Sarah Bird doing some reporting for us as well. All part of our coverage. Round three of the Shannon Speed Series here as we celebrate, unbelievably, 60 years of Ford Mustang as well. Some unbelievable uh, cars on display here along the edge of the circuit. They started building those machines back in March 1964. Launched at the World Fair that year which was incredible. I assume it was incredible. I wasn't there personally, <laughs> Rusty. But, uh, yeah, amazing stuff. Ford have got a great presence here this weekend. We're watching Alex Peroni firing on. He's back to third place. That lap from Brenton Grove, and Grove has actually gone quicker. But Alex, tipping that car into Turn 1, there was a screech of tyres. I, I think that was about maximum commitment for this young guy to get the car turned into that high-speed right-hander. Garth Walden's quickest at the AM cars at the moment at a 26.9. <laughs> Ninth outright, quickest in class. You did a 26.9 in these cars last year, you would have been on pole position comfortably. Pole last year was a 1 minute 27.4. And Brendan Leach bumps Grove off the top spot by 0 .004 of a second. The 28 year old from Invercargill is flying. 25-6, well, you've got to go more decimal points than that. 25-6-2 plays a 25-6-3. And Brendan Leach goes to provisional pole. Now, qualifying one, it must be said, sets the grid for one of our races. Qualifying two, we'll see the AM drivers in these outright cars. That'll set the grid for the other race. Oh, Whoa. he is pushing, isn't he? But it's not giving him the game because he's, he's overstepping it, isn't he, in the behaviour of the car. So... Pushing hard though. Leach with the fastest time. 25626. That's an unreal lap of Phillip Island. So this will set the grid for race two, which is tomorrow's race. The grid for race one will be set a little bit later on this morning, or just after this session. Five minutes remaining. Chad Mostert's on a very good lap in the Ferrari. Perfect first sector, which means quickest of all. And you heard Liam touching on BOP. BOP is balance of performance. And that's how SRO, the governing body or the, the organisers of global GT racing, manage the performance of the different types and makes of cars. So a mid-mount V10 Audi 
with a V8 twin turbo Ferrari and a front engine normally aspirated Mercedes AMG. That's how they can all lap within a few tenths, if not closer, uh, at any given circuit around the world. It's a series of weights, revs, turbo boost pressure, ride heights are used to manage the performance of the varying cars. Right now, it's an Audi on top of Mercedes AMG second, an Audi third, and then Jaden Ojeda and a Mercedes in fourth, then the Ferraris, including car number one, this one, but it's a good lap from Chaz. Quickest in the first sector, quickest overall as well, and Mostert now goes two tenths clear of the pack at a 1 minute 25.3. Great lap, Chaz. The sister car of Jackson Evans, I think, picked up a little bit of time there, Richard, but it sits down in seventh at the moment, so let's see what the Kiwi can do with three, just under four minutes remaining in this session. Great battle, Mostert versus Leach up top. A mighty lap time from Brendan, uh, Brenton Grove, rather, to, to kind of... Um, kickstart this flurry that we've had and Mostert might be going on with it here now fastest first sector that we've seen in this quali session so Mostert continues oh, wow it got out of turn four really well Ferrari put its power down to the ground nicely beautiful little slide on the corner exit and then around this high speed part of the racetrack leaning on all the aero of this car Will Brown's gone second so the Schumacher Audi Pops up 0.17 behind with a 1 minute 25.55. So the Audis do look very, very strong here. Mossed it up again. Middle sector, uh, sector not the best of the session, but the best for the car. There's some improvement coming, Rusty for Chaz. He's already a tenth and a half up. Is there more time to find? The 25.37 at the moment. Is it 24 possible? It's, it's still a decent chunk of time to do that, but wow, what a lap so far we're into the 25s under three minutes remaining it's a 25 1 7 from chas mostert <laughs> that is a huge benchmark 25 wow in a gt3 car at phillip island that's extraordinary there are very few wings and slicks cars that will go that fast around this place we go back and find the triple eight race engineering Triple eight car, Declan Fraser's behind the wheel. He's about to improve. He's eighth, moves to sixth. He's only half a second away from provisional pole. Cameron. Yeah, I thought I'd grab Mike Sheargold really quickly, mate. As an AM car, looks like you're doing the job at the moment with Garth at the wheel. Track looks quick too. Yeah, thanks, Cam. The track's real quick. Um, a lot more grip out there. Mid-corner speeds have come up a lot since kind of last year, since they've resurfaced it. And yeah, Garth certainly knows his way around a race car, so um, he's doing a great job out there. All right, Mike, good luck for later on. Thanks, Cam. Cheers, mate. They're a great combination, and it's a very well-run Sydney racing team. And, man, they have got their hands involved with all sorts of different cars and classes, don't they? But it's it's a joy to walk into that pit garage down there. So, at the moment, ninth for this, for their car, car 45. Garth, it's, sorry, Rusty, Garth. <laughs> Garth was toying with the idea of hanging up the helmet, but he's... Oh, I'm not joking either. He was... He is great at bronze, though, so all of a sudden he's been an incredibly in-demand racing car driver because his driver categorisation works particularly well for him as we find Renee Gracie, who won the trophy class in the older model Audi R8 last year, and then this is the Triple Eight car with Declan Fraser behind the wheel. Brenton! Brenton Grove! 25-2, second quickest, thank you very much. He has had his weak picks this morning. <laughs> This is against Chaz Mostert and Will Brown. Now, Brent is a properly fast young racing car driver, and remember, was on the pathway, Formula 4, Porsches. Was oh, 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 just as you were talking about him. Oh, speaking of, I was going to make the point that he doesn't do this full time. He runs the business, runs the race team, but he's been awesome in this qualifying session. A light touch of the tyres, and we'll drive on. Very slippery on the grass. Control attention on teams, 30 seconds remaining. Alistair McVane working in that team, spotted him down there this morning. So there's some good people behind the scenes as well. We mentioned Adam DeBore before there as well. Just 18 seconds remaining. Let's look here. Now, this has been a trouble spot for this car. We know that. Oh. Sparks again flying. So it gets awkward across the curbing, out of our shot. And I reckon that's when it's then continued on into the grass. Now, he's not the first person to do that in this session. I saw those visit Victoria signs, the styrofoam signs had already been pulverised once in the session. I hope they've got a good stash of those this weekend to go and replace them because they might get cleaned up. 
got away with that, Brenton. You heard the voice of race director James Taylor. The same man that calls the shots for the Supercars Championship. Does that for Fanatec GT World Challenge. Flags out. Qualifying one. Still another 20-minute session to go. No one's going to beat Chas Mostert. They will. Brown is on a lap in car 87. That's the Audi R8. Melbourne Performance Centre. Audi Sport Customer Racing. Will there be some improvement for Will before he hands that car over to Brad Schumacher? Here it is. It looks to me like Roll the out of it. come out of this lap. There is a little bit of damage to that, the rear of the Grove car. Not significant, as you kind of said, Richard. Uh, he, he's largely got away with that. So in comes the car of our, our third fastest combination or team, if you will, Will Brown. The Shuren partner's Audi. He was really excited when I spoke to him earlier in the week about working and continuing to, to pair with um, with Schumacher, who does such a good job, doesn't he, yeah. when it comes to Bathurst 12 hour and racing in that, uh, in that neck of the woods. There's such a remarkable depth of talent among the AM drivers, the amateur drivers, the part-timers that pair up with these pros. And we've talked about Liam Talbot, who'll jump aboard that number one Ferrari for the next session. It's number one because Liam won the championship last year. Just waiting for Jaden Ojeda, who's just jumped to third. So Ojeda to P3 right at the end. Good spot, Rusty. That's a great lap. Recent back, the six-hour winner. So Mostert, Grove, Ojeda, Brown, Leach, Evans, Fraser and Peroni, the top eight. All pros covered by seven tenths of a second. Crazy. Among four different manufacturers. Garth Walden uh, pole position in qualifying one for the AM class. That's a huge lap for Garth at a 1 minute 26.3. Only 1.1 seconds away from Chaz Mostert's lap time. Valentino Astudi, I was about to say Rossi, did a 27-3-3 for pole in trophy class in that Aston, but beat all by one of the AM cars as well. That's a huge lap from Valentino. Renee Gracie, solid job, 27-4 to end up 11th. There's confirmation of those results. So Ferrari, two Mercs, then a couple of Audis. Not much wrong with that balance of performance, is there? It's nice very, work very by Ojeda to, to, at the very end there, to get up into that, that third fastest time. Probably a bit to unpack there too. I think Leach and Miles might have thought they had a fraction more, but as Richard detailed there, it's tight at the top. More to come here, live from Phillip Island. A real family weekend here. Shannon Speed Series.
Third stop on the tour for the Shannon Speed Series, the iconic Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. We are getting set for the next part of qualifying for the Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia. As cars roll out of the lane, let's get an update from Cam. Yeah, fresh out of the car is Chaz Mostert, a 25-1. Chaz, that's hooking along. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that, but obviously the conditions, um, a bit of rain this morning and the track temp's nice and low. And um, yeah, it was actually a good dry session. So um, yeah, car felt really hooked up. Uh, we spoke to Liam just while you were out on track before, and he said that the thoughts were this was going to be an Audi track. It looks like first blood to Ferrari. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, I've driven a few different manufacturers now. The Ferrari for me is like a really good all-rounder car. It's got a bit of strength in, in the aero, a bit of strength around the mechanical balance. Um, you know, the, the engine power is, is quite nice, the way it delivers to the road. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's probably one of the best GT cars I've ever driven. So, um, yeah, overall, it's just enjoyable to drive. Anytime you can race here out here at Phillip Island, always a great one as well. So, um, yeah, we don't get to race here as much as we'd like to in Australia. But, um, yeah, just, just pumped to be able to do the job for this brand new team. They've worked extremely hard in the off-season to get these two new Ferraris here. It all looks the part. The cars are obviously operating. Um, and it's just good to be um, linking up with a former engineer with Adam DeBorah as well. Just quickly, this is a GT, GT, GT track. Aero is, is high. The wind is starting to come up. Is that going to make it challenging at all? Yeah, it'll make it a bit more challenging. Some corners you'll have more grip. Some corners you'll have less grip. Um, and sometimes you come in as a driver scratching your head trying to work out um, what happened to your car balance. So, yeah, wind is massive influence around here. Um, obviously got Liam in the car now. He won the championship last year, so I've got, got a super cruisy job. They've got one of the best AMs out there, and, um, you know, everyone knows Liam does a fantastic job. So uh, all lies on him in this qualifying session. Thanks, Chaz. Thank you. Hi to Ree and Ev back home. Miss you. <laughs> Brendan Grove is alongside me. Just a little bit to unpack from that qualifying session for you, Brendan. First of all, start with the positives. Front row start, P2. That was quick. Yeah, it was, um, it was getting faster throughout the session. Uh, and it was all about getting the tyre temp and the pressure right. So Al made some good calls to bring me in and drop the pressure as the temp was going up. Uh, and I really had one last run and had to see what I could do. And luckily it, it came off. You're having a crack too. There were some moments at the end of the Gardner straight here. Talk us through what the car was doing. Just something with the balance there or just, just going too hard? Probably going a bit hard. I always tell our supercar guys and Steve to have a crack. And um, I had to do it myself. The car felt good. I knew that we were close, but I didn't know how far we'd get, so can't die wondering, right? It's a bit of a tailwind. Does that affect your braking markers down there? And, of course, you're in the Merc as opposed to the Porsche that you're used to. Yeah, the wind direction into one's completely different to today, uh, to yesterday, sorry. So we had a headwind, so you could go faster through there yesterday. Tried to use the same markers today, and it couldn't quite make it. So, um, yeah, the balance is really tricky because it's wet, dry, the wind's changing. But the Merc's an awesome car. It's so much easier to drive than the Porsche. I think last time I was here in the Porsche, I was nearly two seconds off Chaz, and today I share the front row with him. So shows how nice the car is to drive, and, and our boys have done a fantastic job as well. So Dad's not well just quickly. You've damaged the car for him, so hopefully he's not at home watching. But how is he, and do you think we'll see him tomorrow? Is that the plan? You've got a big day ahead yourself now. Yeah, he's unwell, so hopefully he's asleep at the moment. He doesn't see this, because I might get uh, he might get in a bit of trouble. But look, hopefully he can rest up. I'm sure now we're on the front row tomorrow. He'll all of a sudden magically feel better. So. Um, all the boys would really love to have him back, and I really hope he can make it tomorrow because we want to put on a show for everyone. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers. Chris Dubbs chatting to Brenton Grove, an outstanding performance in qualifying one for Brenton for Grove Racing. So that team is part of changing the way they've entered their car this weekend with Stephen Grove stepping out and Brenton driving solo. They will only take part in that first qualifying session. Uh, <laughs> It's still a very, very good effort. It doesn't matter now what happens the rest of the weekend. That's a fair old benchmark. So this is qualifying two. So in the pro cars that we saw, Mostert and we saw Will Brown and the like in the first qualifying session, the AM driver now takes over aboard those cars. You can tell the pro AM entries apart by the yellow sort of highlight on the timing totem on the left of your screen. Green are the AM class cars with just the amateur drivers and then the blue for Mike Bailey and the Aston Martin, which is a trophy class car. Liam Talbot, the reigning GT World Challenge Australia champion, is behind the wheel of car number one for Arise Racing Ferrari GT. And a 1 minute 26.6 already for Liam. Puts that car on top and he'll now go to the lane for a little bit of a tweak and a debrief and then we'll be able to run again. So we go through and do this all again, qualifying two, Fanatec GT World Challenge. And this will set the grid race one a bit later on today. The Kanduris Merc just, I think, 
Gradually starting to wind up here, but it's not ideal for Schumacher as they come out of the final turn. So that got awkward. I, I think Brad wanted to get on with it and was boxed in. That'll impact his, uh, perhaps, this lap. He goes fourth with that one, or well, fifth as it is now, but we're very early in this uh, this session. G. Talbot has opened the account well there at 26.640. Back in the lane as, as Rich's detail there. And Paul Stokel, second fastest at 26.98. So the Bathurstian and Brad Schumacher, who lives within sight of Pit is, Lane at Mount Panorama. Is that a thing? It's a term. Is it Absolutely. a term? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Definitely. It's one of a couple of uh, members of the motor racing community that live in that part of the world. Why wouldn't you? Spectacular. Uh, he's done a great job in these cars. In fact, th this is not his Audi R8. The car that he actually owns is currently parked in the foyer of Richard's Mount Panorama Resort on display there. This is one of the Bell Performance Centre fleet. Current spec for Evo specification for the Audi R8 LMS. What a workhorse these cars have been. The most successful model in GT3 racing history, the R8, since its introduction. Three wins at the 12-hour domestic championships as well with Jeff Emery behind the wheel. And last year, Liam Talbot, who's jumped across from Audi to Ferrari. So a little bit of a change-up for Liam, who's also got some international racing planned as well. We should say, speaking of Liam, we should take it aid to Yasser Shahin. Those two had a, I think feisty is the word we'd use, battle here 12 months ago. Yasser not running this weekend uh, in the MA Porsche. He's busy with FIA World Endurance Championship constraints and a big, big slide for Peter Hackett, who's having all kinds of dramas down at the Southern Loop and off in the gravel trap is another peep. No, it's not. It's Paul Stokel. Stokel. In the car that he'll share with Renee Gracie, but he's going to drive that car out. So the Triple Australian Drivers' Champion is going to be able to continue on the session and will stay green. Wow, mid-corner. And Hackett, I think, was just perhaps caught out by Stokel's moment in front of him. I thought the tyre squeal was coming from Hollywood, not from Stokel. Yeah. That's a strange little moment that Pete was able to catch. Bathurstian denotes someone from Bathurst or Mount Panorama. See also thirsty commentators. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> Fair. Good luck from Schumacher. Purple first sector means quickest of anybody in the session so far. He's up overall on the lap relative to Liam Talbot. One minute 26, six to beat. Remember, that lap would have put him on pole outright against the pros last year. Shows how quick the circuit is. And Brad goes second at one minute 26, eight to two. They're all beaten by Elliot Shute, who puts the number eight Ferrari on top by a fraction, a fraction of a second. The young West Aussie, who's graduated via Arise Racing's radical program into GTs, goes quickest in the number eight Ferrari. He'll share with Jackson Evans. Love that. Great story. We've got 11 and a half minutes remaining in this session. The Ferraris, as they were in the first part of qualifying for Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia, looking uh, sharp. And then a young racer or a racer who stepped out of what was, I, I guess, their... Um, their foundation, if you like, for Arise Racing, so well established in that style of competition, really making a mark at the moment. Awesome job by Schumacher. Let's have a little look here. The Openduris. And somehow gets it pointing all back in the right direction. Is that Ken Barron? <laughs> that is a thing. Uh, that is a thing. I'm not sure about that. No, that's <laughs> yeah, but it's 100%. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, this is live shots of Theo parked on the, basically the escape road and the run to the back of the paddock here. That's down at turn four, the old Honda hairpin. Stokel's gone into pit lane for a change of Pirellis. Four sets of Pirelli P0 slick tyres to be used across the course of Fanatec oh. GT World Challenge weekend. I'm getting nervous there. That's the exit road off the old, what we refer to as Honda corner. Um, but it doesn't look like it's all that far off the racing line. So some of them are arriving down there at a rate of knots. And we go red flag as a result. So race direction gave enough time for Theo to try and get that car rebooted. 
unfortunately it hasn't been able to. Fortunately, it's in the right kind of position where a flat toe should be able to get it back to the back of the paddock and this session should be able to reach him quite quickly with Elliot Chu quickest. A great lap for Sergio Perez in the Velmont Racing number 44 Audi. One minute 27.56 within a second of shoots time and currently quickest in the AM class. Cameron. You've heard a couple of drivers mention how the conditions keep changing on them in session. Well, it feels like there's more moisture in the air. The cloud cover's starting to roll in and it feels like there might be a bit of mist on it as well. Now, Phillip Island, it normally takes two laps of rain on the windscreen before you see a, a tangible difference in lap time. But for some of these drivers out there right now, it's the wind that is worrying them. You heard that from Chaz before, and I think it's changing again on them out there. And so the next run they have might be completely different to the first half of this second part of qualifying. Yeah, the weather's been coming from the left of this shot, sort of over turn 12 and 11, sort of following the cars as they come down the start finish right there it is. And we look across there, there is a sort of haze of mist coming across the fields just before uh, Gap Road that brings you alongside the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. So they'll be pretty keen to get this session restarted as quickly as possible to get some lap times if indeed some wet weather comes. But big lap from Elliott shoot 0 0.033 quicker than Liam Talbot. That's a huge lap from Elliott. Liam the defending champion in second. Speaking of champions, Chris Stubbs is down in the lane. Well, I'm joined by one, being Will Brown. I'm not one myself. Will, Brad's in the car now. Your session there. Second row. What's your take on it? Pretty quick. The Audi's looking nice here. Yeah, the uh, Shaw and Partners Audi's going pretty good. That's for sure. Uh, you know, we, we were pretty strong. I felt I didn't maximise my car at the end there. So that was a little bit disappointing. Made a mistake in Siberia. But P4 to start in my session. And uh, hopefully Brad can uh, stick it up the front in this one. Liam Talbot saying before, now it could be a bit of foxing because he's in a Ferrari, but saying that this is an Audi track. Is that in your, your mind as well? Do you think that it suits it? I don't know. I don't know if they know what a Ferrari track is. You know what I mean? Like, they've only just got those things. So they seem fast, but they'll tell you anything. Bloody Chaz up there. No, thanks for your time. Good luck. We love having you here with the series too. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Peroni, mate, we were so uh, so happy as Australians watching you in Formula 3 and your journey internationally, but it is amazing to have you back here now in GT racing. Give us uh, your take on how the Audi went in your session before in qualifying. Um, it was good. Like, this track is amazing, and I've never raced in Australia, so I'm experiencing all these awesome tracks, and yeah, the Audi's really good. This team's really good as well. We had a good day yesterday, so we're a bit disappointed with how that went. But, you know, we're still learning. I've got a lot of learning to do. We're learning as a team, so we'll take what we can from that and hopefully be better um, in the future. How much did that time in uh, the FIA Formula 3 Championship help you with setting up as a driver? And what was uh, translatable from open wheel racing into GT racing? Yeah, it's, I mean, you're racing as the youngest, you know, the best youngest drivers in the world, so you have to be on your best the whole time. And I think the biggest thing is just being aggressive and racing wheel to wheel with yeah, these, these awesome drivers. But also here, you know, we have some of the best drivers in the world in Australia, you know, going up against people like Chaz and Will and stuff is, is cool. And um, I can learn from them and yeah, go forward hopefully. And what do you think best uh, result this weekend? Where do you think you can park the car? Well, let's see. If my quality wasn't that good, let's hope Mark Rossley can do a bit better and go up the front. But let's see, anything can happen in the race, mate. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, man. Just one of the many good stories in this field. I mean, you, you can rewind the clock and remember Peter Hackett competing in Formula 3 in this country many years ago. There's a guy who in more recent time has been racing overseas. Tony Bates currently seventh in this, um, this uh, where, where is he? Uh, seventh there in the car, 24. I mean, David Reynolds has been driving that car in recent time, yeah. cutting some miles. And there's all sorts of yarns up and down the lane, names and faces that you'll know. And then perhaps those that have... Um, have been doing other things representing Australia abroad, so really nice to have him with us. That deal to get Alex alongside Mark Rosser in that team happened at the Australian Grand Prix just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, BRM, who run that car, were there looking after Mark's Benetton B200 Formula 1 car that Jack Doohan drove for a couple of sessions. Um, and Alex Peroni was floating around, and Mark and Alex met, and the deal was done, basically on a handshake there, yep. They did a, a test day at the Ben Motorsport Park in South Australia where that car and Mark and the team are based and uh, basically love at first sight and they put this deal together so 
it's a, a great combination. I'm, I'm excited to see what Alex can do in these cars. And, and Mark Rosser is a very fast AM driver. And the last couple of seasons, he's been running S5000 open wheelers and he's sharp as a result. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that combo. So too, this one actually, Paul Stokel's on a good lap here after that incident down at the Southern Loop a couple of minutes ago. This is going to be an improvement from the former open wheel ace. Maintains position, improves lap time. 26.8 for Stokel. Schumacher went quicker as well. Liam Talbot's on a really good lap in the number one Ferrari. And there's Renee Gracie, who will co-drive with Paul Stokel in the number 181 OnlyFans Audi. Whoa! Off! And that's car eight. So Elliot shoots, spins as Talbot goes fastest at a 125.8 for Liam. As he kept it off the wall, I think just... Marginally. As, it, as it went through the gravel trap, I reckon he may just have flag, avoided the wall. Flag. So red flag, Talbot with a 125.81. That is a mighty lap from Liam Talbot. And this could have been a mighty crash from Elliot Shute. But the gravel trap on the exit of turn 12 has done its job. I don't think he hit anything. And you could see from our replay there a moment ago that Liam was ahead of him. So I think, Richard, on that basis, the time should stand. So yep. that 125.81, we go inside the Arise Racing garage, and we're being told from our camera crew there that uh, we believe he did pull up just shy of the wall. So that is a... I mean, because there's such an expensive but beautiful bit of kit. Um, Keeping it off the wall like that is a, is a little win in these circumstances, isn't it? I mean, Elliot second at a 26.6 is still an outstanding performance regardless. But that's a, a significant moment at high speed. Uh, hello to Greg Murphy, who might be watching on back at home. He oh. is quite familiar with that corner. Was probably responsible for that gravel trap going in. Is it 97? I've, I've spoken to him about that, and uh, I know he doesn't like bringing it up. No, no, it doesn't like bringing it up. Yeah. Very, very painful, very vivid memories from uh, from that day. Just for comparison, that lap from Liam Talbot, one minute twenty five eight one, would have put him between Declan Fraser and Alex Peroni of the Pro Drivers in the previous session. Little, little wonder he was oh. walking away with some silverware at the Motorsport Australia Awards after Sandown. We had our at the opening round of the, the Shannon Speed Series this year on the Sunday night. We gathered at what they affectionately know as Jeff Shedd in this part of the world, the Melbourne Convention Centre for the 2024 awards. And uh, Liam recognised for what he did. Look at those magic array of Ford Mustangs, all different eras and iterations represented here. So good to have those club members, those passionate enthusiasts here with us showcasing those cars. And as we detailed at the top of the coverage, the wonderful, as you can see, it did stay off the wall. Just great stuff. The build of the Ford Mustang. They they began working on the production line in 1964, celebrating 60 years of that icon. There they are. There's more than 60 of them here. They had a parade light this morning at exactly the right moment that it rained. <laughs> but I don't think anyone. I didn't care. Anyone did had a bad time doing it. Yeah, it's a great collection. Um, we've got. Monochrome GT4 Australia running this weekend, and George Medici, um is aboard Ford Mustang and scored pole position with uh, young Ryland Gray, and that was the first pole for a Ford Mustang GT4 globally, anywhere. And you'll see that later on in our coverage, the first Monochrome GT4 race as part of our Speed Series broadcast this weekend. That is a stunning bit of kit. And first one in the country. It's only arrived here in the last little while. And then just to add to that, the only one in the Southern Hemisphere currently too. So really significant moment for that car as Rich just detailed. Thank you. While we're talking about Ford, the Ranger Wildtrak V6 Recovery Ute goes, uh, goes into action here. We'll take you back to pit lane in the meantime. Let's get another update. Here's Chris. Thank you. Joined by Jaden Juice O'Jada. Mate, great to see you again. Third in your session. How was it out there? Pretty quick, this place, isn't it, with the resurfacing? What a fun time you must have had. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty hooked up nowadays in a GT car. I like to say we're, you know, a good second and a half quicker than the, the lap record. Uh, previously, it's, it's really enjoyable to drive a GT car around this circuit. That session was eventful. Uh, obviously, we were sort of watching the GT4 session beforehand, watching how quick the track would dry up and Luckily enough, it was completely dry, which is nice. It means you can just have a proper run at it, but it's still a little bit damp in some spots off track. So 
um, yeah, just pushing and getting the tyre pressures right to, to have the car at the end. It's a big year. Paul Lucini is alongside. You talk to us about your role in, in helping him stepping up into this class. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, the pro's job is to support the M and, you know, develop them and coach them as much as you can. And then, you know, when it's your turn to jump in the car, try to do the job and um, make their life as, as easy as possible with the car set up and managing all that side of things. So it's been fun working with Paul. Really nice guy, easy going, which is, um, you know, suits my style uh, quite nicely as well. You've had a good couple of weeks, back-to-back -back victories at the six hour as well at Bathurst. You must have enjoyed that. Yeah, 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 very cool. Very cool to do that with Simon Hodges and George Medicki in the GT4. So, um, you know, hopefully have another crack at that again next year and see if we can make it three. There you go, mate. All the best this weekend. We'll catch up with you again soon. Easy. Thank you. One of the rising stars of, uh, of Australian motorsport. He has a very bright future ahead of him, doesn't he? I was so. speaking, Rusty, to Darryl O'Young, who's one of the co-owners at Craft Bamboo Racing, hugely successful team based out of Hong Kong uh, in GT racing, and Jaden hooked up with them at the Bathurst 12 hour early this year. Very, very highly rated among international GT fraternity and also Mercedes AMG have got their eye on him as well. There's the go-kart track just near the museum here. It's on the outside of the track on the run down toward turn one, 750 metres long. And it's a replica of his... Uh, is that what Matt Nolte wore to the office today? I, I think, think that maybe? was Cam more Cameron Van and Cameron, oh, yeah. He loves the, the flare yeah, Get into it. I like it. I like it. The point I was going to make about the go-kart track, it's an exact replica of the circuit here. You can go flat at more places on the go-kart track than you can here at Phillip Island, though, from experience. You know this from experience. Yeah. How's your band going there, by the way? Are you allowed back yet? Uh, I may just be allowed back onto the uh, the go-kart track. Um, I spent a bit of time, actually, yesterday for a yarn with um, our Sarah Burt, which will bring you in the coverage over in the museum. It was nice to remember, and, and it, it tells a great story of racing here at Phillip Island. They were racing around the streets of cows just down the road back in the 1920s, pre World War II. The circuit proper here has, has uh, been in existence since the 1960s and we're celebrating 10 years since the Lynn Fox Property Group took over yeah. Phillip Island and they've done some tremendous things with it since then. The place looks uh, incredible, doesn't it? Great crowd here today as well already with a great program coming your way. So lots of racing short and sharp and long distance alike. You're going to see Super Cheap Auto TCR Australia very soon. We've got Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge up. That is a fiery field. They'll be live a little bit later on this afternoon with their first race of a brand new season. And there is a very happy Liam Talbot because he's backed up what Chaz Mostert did in qualifying one. A one minute 25.8. He's got pole position in qualifying two here at Phillip Island. What an extraordinary effort it was from Liam Talbot. The session was, of course, cut short, but, mate, that was some quick pace. You have to move the car, so you've still got the helmet on, but here's your award, Pirelli pole position for you. You can take that with you in the car and enjoy it, and, and the celebrations, mate. What a performance. Yeah, the car feels good. There's more in it, so it uh, would have been nice to extend the session, but, um, yeah, nevertheless, good start for the team. I mean, double pole position, and, um, yeah, big thanks to Arise Racing GT. So many hours behind the scenes getting this car ready and uh, really appreciate everyone's efforts. Mate, I don't know if you can understand it or not, but it's already a fan favourite. Having a Ferrari back in GT World Challenge Australia is awesome. The fans are loving the car. Are you? Uh, yeah, it's my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, well done. Good luck in the race this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to Liam Talbot there. That wraps up Quali for Fanatec GT World Challenge Australia. Stick around. Whatever you do, Quali for Super Cheap Auto TCR comes up in just a few moments.